All right, so that brings us to our fireside for episode one. I'm so excited to welcome our inaugural guest, Sarah Shui. Sarah is the founder and CEO of Happily. Happily is a global events company that represents the work of over 50,000 independent event specialists. They join together on a shared mission to bring the best of humanity to live and virtual experiences. And they care about the future of our planet and they use technology um, to create unique, fun, carbon zero events. And just a little bit about Sarah, she's an experience economy pioneer with a background in film and tech from uh, USC, the University of Southern California, go Trojans. And Sarah co-founded TED Active. She's the founder of EXP, which is actually how I first met uh, Sarah. I, I had the, the opportunity to be a part of one of her EXP uh, events um, and is the board president of DubLab, LA's first internet radio station. But something that I'm really excited about, I know we want to talk about, uh, she recently broke the internet with her cyber wedding, which was streamed live on every continent. Uh, so make sure, again, to post your questions for Sarah right in the Slido tab on the right side of your screen. Um, we, we, we know we're going to have a lot of questions for her. We'll make sure to get to some of yours by the end of the segment. So Sarah, welcome. Welcome to Back of House Live. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, Anthony and Lauren. I'm so excited to be here. Thank awesome. you so We're much for being here. here. Welcome. Welcome. Well, as AK mentioned, um, you broke the internet with your wedding. We would love to hear more about that. Tell us about how you decided to pivot to that during the pandemic. I mean, it was um, pretty crazy because, um, you know, I like I've actually produced probably over a thousand weddings for other people. So when my wedding got canceled on March 13th, it was oh like destruction like around the world like it was like no it's so super sad um and uh and actually my uh my husband worked um for spacex at the time and he was like literally working on a huge project to um safely launch astronauts into space and i was like get yeah. home our wedding was canceled <laughs> and like he like left a meeting bless his heart you know rushed home and and we were like what are we gonna do and i just really couldn't and if our wedding was gonna happen and did actually wind up happening um on april 25th and we made the decision to not postpone it but to we had already had all of our friends and family save the date so we thought like actually just like you know make a lemonade out of lemons mm -hmm. and uh take the opportunity to um, reimagine, right? Like what a wedding could be. And thus like what we call, uh, the cyber wedding was born. It was awesome. That's amazing. I, I remember you, uh, when we had our prior conversation, you saying that, I think you did it this in six weeks. Is that what you, you right pivoted? from March 13th to April 25th, six, uh, six weeks of time. I mean, like you just saw that, the DNC video at happily, you know, we, we represent like the largest network of, uh, independent event specialists. And so, um, we're really used to, we're like the team that you call when you're like, we've got a week, we've got a, like a few days. And <laughs> we all need one of those. <laughs> so, you know, the time, the time, you know, the time was not so much of uh, an issue for me, but it was more like, how do we, how do we like create a mm -hmm. intimate experience, um, you know, virtually and do all of the things, make it feel like a wedding still? Um, but also be visually interesting and creative. I mean, I got a degree in film from USC, so I'm like very sensitive to what storytelling is like, um, how to make um, how to make things cinematic um, on stage. Um, so what I wound up doing was essentially rewriting, like I wrote a script for what um, our wedding would be like, and then I I changed it so that like the climax point, um, you know, was. The time when we like uh, set our vows usually at a wedding right you say your vows at the beginning and there's like we know that there's an order you say your vows you know you've got some cocktail hour and dinner so we we totally um reordered those things and then created different segments and then i worked with different directors and animators and different like teams um for oh. each sort of segment of um of our wedding to create a really um a really beautiful, I think, like portrait, but very weird and 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 very kooky and strange, but very true to who we were, like a uh, you know a cyber wedding experience. That's incredible. That's um, I saw that you ended up on the Daily Mail UK. How did that all <laughs> kind of go down? Yeah, um, that was crazy um, as well. So one of our 
one of our producers at Happily Dougie, he, um, he's just like, he's like, he's in, he's in, based in Hollywood. He knows everybody. And he was like, this has got to be like, this has got to be a big deal, Sarah. And he's like, let me just introduce you. He like sent a text message to me and some reporter, I had no idea where they were from and like got on a really quick call with them. And I, sent over like of course i had a deck for like the cyber wedding and what it was. <laughs> and like, he's like, what are we, you know what are you doing and i was like let me just send you the deck and if you want to write about it cool but like we got a lot of stuff to do so you got to stay out of our way and then it turned out to be you know this big deal on daily mail which is you know it turned it was that was really fun because we um we still haven't um we still haven't like made a like a final video piece of our wedding since mm -hmm. the whole thing is on video so the daily mail uh reporting of that wound up being our our like snapshot I love it that's fantastic well congratulations on your wedding it's super exciting I saw the video and it's such an incredible work and the creative behind it is fantastic awesome. thank you yeah um yeah it's it's um yeah th th actually like that experience um helped me pretty early on to commit to virtual I think you know back in um, mid April, we were also like, what I, as far as I know, like one of the first to, like we shut down our platform that allows, you know, people to, to hire our team. Um, mm -hmm. and so like, we're only doing virtual. I think we said that like mid April and back then everyone was like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but, um, but actually the, the creative process and the, the wonderful uh, experience that I had with cyber wedding, um, allowed me to sort of um, commit to virtual and, and just continuing to like rethink experiences in an online format. Yeah. I did want to ask about that, Sarah. And I, uh, obviously we showed the video about the DNC. We, we know we can't you know, talk too much about the details of that actual program, but as, as you sort of like pivoted to virtual, um, happily overall, how do you execute on a program like the DNC or these other ones that are virtual, but obviously you mentioned so many people are involved in the back end to pull this thing off. Can you just talk about like how many people did it take, you know, what different roles, like how, what does it take to put on something of this scale? Yeah. Well, you know, I just got to say like shout out and props, like uh, backstage high five to Justin, who <laughs> is like, you know, one dude like running all the stuff back here. Like um, our, you know, our teams at Apple are much more robust. Um, we have a, a really, um, you know, we've over a lot of, uh, a lot of broadcasts, um, have refined a, uh, sort of a, a, just a backstage workflow and process mm -hmm. and team, our teams and like in a really skinny version, um, would, you know, consist of a, a show caller, uh, slash producer, um, mm -hmm. a, a streaming engineer, um, and someone that's moderating the chat, you know, or like, you know, lifting those things up. So it's like three people, um, for larger broadcasts, like the, like the DNC, um, you know, where they're multi-day, multi-stream, um, and, and even like just totally, we had totally different programs in different sessions, um, you know, for, for that, the teams get, um, get much bigger, but not that much bigger. We, we have like another person that's like specifically dedicated to uh, what we call like a media assets manager um, that's working with any pre-records, um, making sure that when they come in, all of the audio levels are correct and beautiful. Um, we have another person that's just focused on like design and motion graphics. Sometimes that's two people. Um, so there's a little bit more scaffolding when it comes to that. And then there's um, when we have multi-stage, then we will also have uh, a leadership or an executive team that um, um, makes sure that there's consistency and that the vision that is um, set out uh, by the, the client um, is executed across all of the different um, stages. And that executive team will you know, consist of, again, like a producer, a technical director, um, and, uh, and, you know, someone that we call an associate producer, which is one of the, like the magic, like catch all people that make, that make sure that everything like runs on schedule and runs on time. That's awesome. And, and I, one of the things I think is so interesting about your model is you're doing this all with people all over the world. So if I, if I tell me if I'm right on this, I think you're in Taipei right now, I believe. Yeah, as we're doing this show. I'm in Ta Taipei. It's amazing. Is, um, yeah. It's uh, like one a.m. here. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. First of all, for for doing this. Uh, but any do any challenges come from that in terms of like from the long tail of the happily kind of um, uh, community 
of event professionals working from all over the world? How do you coordinate around time zones and, and all these different things to, to pull an event off? Yeah, I mean, actually, it's been only benefits, like only positives that I've seen, um, because we essentially have somebody that's like working at all hours of the day. Yeah. Um, and so, again, since we're like short runways uh, and all that stuff, it's great to be able to um, to schedule people on different time zones. So it's like we get um, assets and, you know, sort of like project direction on the West Coast, moves over mm -hmm. to the East Coast, moves over to Asia, moves over to Europe. And then you have like a final pre-record edit that's ready the next morning. Mm -hmm. um, so we found that that has been um, actually a really big benefit. And you know, we, um, we love the diversity as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and being able to, I don't know, it's just fun, like seeing other people's homes from around the world, mm -hmm. you know, and, and learning, um, you know, learning just a, a lot more about other cultures. I think that's at the core of the reason why, um, at least for me, the reason why I love the event industry is just yeah. um, getting to be able to um, access and, and empower other communities. So I won't like, it's only been, it's only been really positive for us. That's awesome. Um, we want to give our audience a chance to submit a few more questions. I've got one more, uh, that, that I want to ask, but we're, we're kind of, we want to introduce a segment within a segment here. Uh, we're calling it, uh, a cameo cameo. Uh, so, uh, Justin, why don't we go to our, uh, celebrity guest, uh, who wants to ask Sarah a question. Hi, Sarah, Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC here have a question for you. How are you thinking about building sustainable events with a low carbon footprint moving forward? Just a question. Thank you, Chris Kirkpatrick of NSYNC. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Right? <laughs> I love <laughs> it. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, thanks, Chris, for that question. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. I've been a sustainable event producer since like I started, um, in, you know, this company in like 2006, 2007. And, you know, it was really interesting, but, um, just this, just actually during the pandemic, we produced a, a TEDx happily event. Um, and in the process, which is tied to, um, countdown, which is Ted's first time that they decided to move from just ideas and, and turn into action. And all the action is, um, you know, really facing forward towards thinking about how um, how can the TED community actually reduce our carbon emissions down to zero by 2030. And so TEDx Happily was an event that we did that really took um, that mission and that goal and put um, a very specific lens on the event industry. And um, one of the speakers that we had um, Trent Wolby, who is the head of, um, who leads sustainability uh, and events at Google, um, actually surfaced up uh, data for me that um, that flights actually contribute to over 90% of carbon emissions um, oh. from an event. So the fact that we're all just here and virtual and not getting on a plane, this is the number one thing that we can all do to do our part to get down to carbon zero um, in the event industry. And so, you know, it's um, it's really cool. And I just think that like anyone who is here on Hop and I know you're all already doing really wonderful shows, but continue to make these virtual experiences great. Um, it's it's not it's not just about access, which is a really important thing, mm -hmm. um, uh, but it is also about um, really taking a step towards climate action, which we all need to do. Great. Agreed. I mean, with that said, how do you, we have a question from the audience. How do you see the future of virtual events post COVID when in-person events return? Yeah, I think that virtual events, um, has, uh, is going, is going to be, you know, here for a really long time. Um, and it's now just another tool, um, for interaction that, um, is in our event producer toolbox. Um, I think, for the most part, like we'll see virtual events is great because it continues to build frequency of interaction with your community and with your audience. So, I mean, if you, anyone, you know, did events before you remember, it was always like, how do we keep our community together throughout the year? And it was like maybe a Facebook group, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, right. And right. we'll laugh like now because it's, of course, we're just going to be doing lots of virtual events um, in smaller, more niche cohorts. You know, I think that's going to be a really important thing that, um, you know, virtual allows for us to do. 
Um, and then for larger shows, I mean, um, virtual is going to be a really great way, again, to allow anybody from around the globe to not have to step on a plane um, and still be present and still be um, very much in real time um, and, and in lockstep with what's happening with the latest trends in their community. Well said. Well, we'll end on one last fun question. I actually like this from the audience. Uh, do you do, did you do a virtual bouquet throw? <laughs> I love this question. You know, I had, it's so funny. I had a bouquet, but I didn't have anybody to throw it at. And then, <laughs> and then when we were going to like give each other rings, I like, I was like, I don't like, I just like, had to throw it. That's the closest that I got, that I got to it. <laughs> nice. Well, that is wonderful. Um, Sarah, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you. Please share with the audience and everyone listening um, here at home or in the car or wherever they, where they can find you on social um, and what you have coming up. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, check out our website, happily.io, um, and uh, you'll find all of our socials there. We're usually at Team Happily, um, and that's the, the best way to, um, to find us and stay in touch with us. And uh, yeah, we've got a, a lot of really great um, shows coming up. We're actually on Hopin um, right now. At the same time, there's a kickoff call for um, for tech stars. So, so we're really excited. Um, really excited to be working with them and their uh, their group. And we've got um, we've got a really wonderful fundraiser uh, that's happening for the Young Survival Coalition um, that uh, essentially supports. Um, women who have survived um, breast cancer and their caregivers. Wow. And so we're doing a really special program for them too, which we're, we're looking forward to. And those are all happening in just a, you know, just a few weeks now. So wow. <laughs> lots going on. That is incredible and amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Sarah. Um, Sarah. Audience, if you have an idea for guests or want to hear from someone specific to appear on our show, email us at backahouse at hopin.com. We'd love to hear your ideas. Sarah, again, thank you so much for being thank here you, today. Sarah. Thank you and good luck with the rest of the um, with the rest of your season. I look forward to tuning in. Absolutely. Thank you.